I thought I'd just follow suit with the concept of um, young people coming to the Lord. Uh, like uh, two of the testimonies we just heard, I came to the Lord equally under 20. And I wasn't witnessed to as such, not that I remember. I was just simply invited to a meeting with a neighbour about my age. He ended up being the best man at our wedding. And uh, I went along and I heard things I'd never heard before. I'd been going to churches all my life, or not churches, a church. My grandfather was a minister of religion, so was my grandmother. I'd been going to uh, these churches, gone through Sunday school, but at no point had I ever heard the concept of receiving the Holy Spirit. I'd never heard of it. In fact, I don't even know the word Holy Spirit had a significance at that time. I'd never heard of speaking in tongues. I'd, I'd, I've heard of miracles, but I didn't hear that personal experiences were available or even expected. So I had a real eye opener and it turned my life around. And I had a slow start, a typical, a bit foolish, made some bad choices, but uh, we got underway. I got married and uh, I haven't looked back since. And that, that's been a, a long time. And I'm very happy that that time's been productive. But I'd just like to talk a little bit about. Timothy, um, the Timothy in the Bible. Uh, Timothy, there's a, an understanding, um, and I'll just read it to you out of 1 Timothy 4.12. The verse there says, let no man despise thy youth. And I won't go on with the rest of it because that's a topic I wanted to cover. We, we sort of assume that Timothy, when these words were written, was a, a young man, maybe 19, the, the, there's no way of defining his age because that's impossible to work out, but we can calculate perhaps within two or three years of what his age would be simply by comparing the norm for the day of how they behave, what age group people started working uh, in the church, working with uh, church people and so on, and just put together uh, the balance of his story of his life. But as we go through Timothy's life, um, I'd just like to make a point that where the verse says, let no man despise thy youth, he was 12 or 13 years into being spirit-filled when these worst verses were written. So the simple reality is there's no way known he was 18 or 19 or 20, more than likely at this particular point. He was of the age of 30, 32, maybe even 34 when this was written. So we'll get to why these words are written shortly. And the reason I'm going through these things is simply that he did work for the Lord, particularly with Paul, for a long time. And he was a great blessing to Paul and God blessed him and he was a blessing to the churches where he shared Paul's ministry and direction. He took letters with him. He brought letters back. He uh, was sort of, a, keep in mind, there was no mobile phones, uh, no other form of communication. Quite a few of the journeys he had to take were um, by ship or other things to get these letters around. And uh, for example, the letter that went to Corinth probably took between two months or a little bit more to get there. Then by the time they digested what was in it, then sent back a reply, another couple of months. Then by the time he got back again, another couple of months. Uh, it, it's just the way it was. But Timothy was such a man and he did start young. But one of the reasons I, I wanted to point out where it says, let no man despise thy youth, to quote that verse alone and say that Timothy was a young man, like a maybe 20, 21 year old uh, guy doing the Lord's work as a pastor, that, that's actually not correct, as we'll see as we go through. But yes, he was serving the Lord, maybe from 19 or 20, 21, and he was working with Paul. But let's go through and follow up how we can come to these conclusions because he was a young man, but there's probably two stories to be followed here. One was Timothy's life uh, on its own uh, and the support he was for Paul. And we all need someone in, in the church who's a bit of a supporter for us. It helps tremendously if you've got someone who's got your back and uh, is working with you rather than against you. But th there's also the other part of it that he was doing God's will and ultimately, he, he became a pastor of his own fellowship, which we'll get to. And uh, the Bible actually clearly defines that. So we've got some interesting things. But uh, as we go through these verses, we're going to look at some Bible chronology. And it's a bit of a Bible study. It's not complex, not hard. But we'll see how we come up with these answers. And we'll also see just a process of how uh, he was able to work with God, build himself up in the Lord. But probably the main thing is, the example to all of us, whether we're a youthful 
uh, young age or whether we're an older person, at no point in his life did he turn his back on what God wanted him to do. And look, he wasn't asked to jump into a lion's den or do things like that. There were certainly risks in the day with the Roman Empire. People uh, who were enemies against this, what they considered a brand new church, threatening their livelihood, threatening the stability of the city or the nation. There was that type of problem there then. But as we're looking around the world today, it's becoming quite normal for other people to see uh, people who are different than them as being a threat or intimidating. And it might get to the stage where even in the Western nations, people who walk a Christian life and, and live that type of life might be intimidating and threatening to the point where people aren't happy to have us around. And I know it's happening in small degrees, but it could become a lot larger. So I'd just like to talk a little bit about Timothy, how he did the Lord's work, he, he kept doing, but he grew in the Lord. And how did he grow in the Lord? He, he, he just did what God wanted. He read, he prayed, he got around the fellowship. Paul had duties for him to do, and uh, duties aren't the only thing that we have to do. Whether it was Paul or even if you're alive today, we don't have Paul the Apostle alive today, we have his words. And upon all of us, we're called to go out and sort of live the words that Paul gave to Timothy to take to many of the startup churches. Many of them were, of course, in the uh, Gentile cities. And he just took the word, did what was needed, helped out. He, he did some of the dirty stuff as well, the stuff that uh, weren't leadership roles and that uh, he was there for trouble and sold trouble. And he, he was just one of these people you can look at and take delight in. And I'm sure as Paul spoke of him, the same thing happened. Now, if we, the best way to do chronology in the Bible is that nearly everyone will argue a year or two about when a book was written or when something happened. Uh, the best way to find out Bible chronology is simply just do a, a Google search. And I'm not talking about finding out doctrine. I'm talking about finding chronology. Do simply do a Bible search that when did this happen? When did that happen? You'll get a variety of years. So I went through all of the verses that I've got written here where Paul's name, uh, sorry, where Timothy's name is mentioned in the scriptures. And I just went to where that part in the uh, Google had an average. And there's usually about a three year difference between the lowest to the oldest uh, variation. So let's have a look. Um, we won't turn to these scriptures. I'll tell you when we're gonna turn to a scripture. But in Acts 16, where um, Timothy's mentioned, that was 50 AD. Now we can work out that Timothy was around 20 years old at that time. So we have a starting point uh, I've opted for 20 rather than 18 or 19 or 21 or 22, which seems to be the average. I opted for 20, the middle ground. So this is sort of averages and averages. So when Acts 16 was written and the, um, Paul said he would send a Timotheus, a disciple of his there, he was about 20 years old then. So he was, yes, he was doing the Lord's work as a young man, but this was 50 AD. Now, in the next chapter, Timothy's mentioned again, and they've moved on. They've got another thing. He sent Paul uh, to go somewhere, and Timothy's off somewhere. And uh, this is dated at 51 AD. So Timothy's now 21. Then when Acts 18 was written, and Timothy's mentioned again, a couple of uh, jobs that they had to do here and there. Timothy uh, was still round 21. And at the same time, in part of this journey from where he was, in 1 Thessalonians 1, which is just simply an overlap of time, even though they're different books of the Bible, it's an overlap in time. And both these things are happening in the same time frame. Uh, by 1 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1, uh, he's also still 21. So he had a very busy life as a 21-year-old doing the Lord's. And you can imagine the excitement of moving around the country, doing things that very few people did. He never did this as a rich man. He never did it with money. He would have uh, had to be subsidised or earn his money as he went. He struggled with quite a few pressures and, and toils, but he was there to do the Lord's work. And look, there's a bottom line, which I always try and remember for myself. There's a scripture that talks about receiving a love of the truth. And once you have a love of the truth, not just a love of God or a love of yourself, a love of your church, they're all important. But if you receive a love of the truth, that is one of the most important things you'll ever have in the Lord. You love what truth is. And the Bible makes it very clear that they received the love of the truth. 
that they might be saved, that they wouldn't fall away. And that, that's what we've got to sort of hang to, is that everything the Lord talks about, the principles we get taught, the realities of our fellowship, if we have a love of the truth of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and look, we might not do all things well, in fact, we don't, but we're not there to do everything well. We're there to promote something. None of us are professional in the sense that we've been trained ultimately in university to do the ministry of the Lord. It doesn't work that way. Our ministry, we learn, school of hard knocks, we learn as we go along, we make mistakes. Sometimes the people we trust and rely on, they let us down. Some, some of our friends excel. And uh, it's just the type of life we have. And this guy, Timothy, he, he sort of jagged it really good in the sense that he was Paul's assistant, but he worked at it and he did things for Paul and he did a lot of very powerful things. Now, I'd like to turn to 1 Thessalonians 3, uh, 3 verse 2, because this qualifies who, who, how Timothy was seen by Paul when he wrote these words to the church at Thessalonia. And it says in verse two, and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God and our fellow labourer in the gospel of Christ to establish you, to comfort you concerning your faith. So we have this explanation in this verse two that Timothy was seen as a brother in the Lord, but he was also at 21, a minister of God, but he was a fellow labourer in the gospel. And he was there at this point to help establish them. So this Gentile church, which had, uh, was in probably threatening times and threatening circumstances, Timothy was there with the uh, words of Paul to direct them, to follow through with what Paul wanted, to understand certain things himself, to offer his own advice. And he had this most remarkable life at uh, 21. Here he is doing this. And yet at the same time, he was always... Paul's servant. He was always the helper. He was always the labourer, the friend, the person who was there, the shoulder to cry on. That was sort of who this guy was. And he's probably the most popular or well-known youth, if you want to use those terms, in all of the New Testament. And at no point is there any big noting, any big special sort of uh, fanfare for who he is or what he did. And yet we live in a generation today where a lot of people feel the need that if there's no fanfare, that somehow they're lost or they're failed. If there's no bright light shining behind their head to indicate that they're successful, they see perhaps their task or their duty in the Lord as insignificant or without value. And that's not how it is because at no point do we see Timothy sharing that limelight, just quiet little phrases of what his work was, what he was doing. And uh, even in uh, verse six, if you're already in 1 Thessalonians 3, it says, but now when Timotheus, or Timothy has come uh, to you unto us, sorry, I'll read it again. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also want to see you. Timothy took back as he saw it, as he called it after delivering it. And Paul himself was just so thrilled that what that the trust he had in Timothy was paying off because Timothy went there. They had a, an outcome which was positive. And he came back and told them, and they were just simply sharing the joy of the Lord. This was a new church. They didn't know their Bible. In fact, the bulk of them would never have owned a Bible. They would have had a few little verses here and there and snippets of this and snippets of that. But probably the greatest amount of writing they had on the day would have been the letters that Paul sent. And that was their whole guide to life. And there's a, a few interesting things about that which we'll get to. Anyway, we'll just move on a little bit. Second Thessalonians was written again after Paul heard all these good things. And by then, that was 51 AD, which is sort of getting late into that year, perhaps. And Timothy's mentioned again, and he was just moving out of 21, probably into 22. Now, getting back to another book, but the same time frame between cities and responsibilities, we move into Acts 19, and that's about 53 AD. So Timothy's now moved along. He's now 23 year old. And the Bible says there, you don't need to turn it, I'll just quote it to you. He said, so he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he stayed himself in Asia for a season. So he was ministered. Paul, I, I love this thought, 
that the younger men who were doing the work of the Lord, that Paul sat there and um, he, he was being ministered to uh, by these two guys. And it must have been such a, a joy in his heart and such a relief to see other people, part of the church he was in. And keep in mind that Paul was in a blessed position because he'd actually been guilty of murdering church people. You know, it wasn't all that long ago that he was the guy getting all the church people put to death. In fact, he was probably more feared in the church than anything they had to fear at this particular point onwards. And it's sort of a very scary thing to realize just how this thing all turned around. Like it's a great blessing, but it's just remarkable to think that this guy could have been an absolute tyrant now destroying all these spirit-filled people. But here he is after repenting and receiving the spirit himself. And here he is expanding the church in such a way that no one had ever seen before and able to get the loyalty of people like Timothy and Erastus and many of the others who are mentioned in different books and to just move these, not only moving himself forward spiritually, not only moving the church forward, the Bible's being written, we've got the record, it's moving us forward, it's giving us hope. But he's there just building up and building up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of, it's very satisfying to the heart to know that people like yourselves, they're just having a chat with your pastor, the pastor's wife, sometimes the pastor's kids, any of the house leaders, just this positive feedback, positive influence, the friendship, all these things are just so meaningful to people in the Lord, including yourselves. And, you know, we enjoy being around the people who are loyal, who are faithful, and uh, it's good to be able to go out there and recover a few folks, see new people come. But anyway, this was the story of these guys' lives. So we'll just keep moving time-wise. Acts 20, we'll get to now. Now, by the time we get to Acts 20, it's 55, 56 AD. Timothy is now 25, perhaps going on to 26. And uh, his name is mentioned again, and we'll move through. The next time his name is mentioned in a chronological pattern, is in 1 Corinthians, and he's around 26 years old now. And I, I want to read this one out because Timothy would have known this well. And uh, Paul, in other words, Jesus, in other words, God had trusted these people to take the word that he so loved and wanted brought to the human race. God had trusted Timothy to take this out and do the job. Now, when we go out there, we might do it on behalf of this person, that person, if you sort of follow the chain back uh, to the house leader, the pastor, or your parents or whatever, right back. Ultimately, the chain goes back to Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of God. The chain goes from him to the Father, who's given him all authority and power to rule and reign and judge at this particular point. Now, you and I are doing what Timothy's doing, but we, we don't always grasp the picture. We don't always realise that we are doing what Timothy's doing, but we're doing it with a lot more resources than he had. You know, we've all got, you know, my um, phone's got eight or nine different versions of the Bible in it. I'd probably do a lot more if I wanted. I've got, you know, a couple of computers with the Bible in them. I've got paperback Bibles. I've, we can access anything, but the thing we need to do, we need to access the Lord because that's where the power is and that's what the Lord wants from us. So, we sort of keep, keep moving along, but I want to make a point here in 1 Corinthians 4, because what's said here in verse 17 is quite powerful. And uh, to me, it's sort of a direction to the church. I hope you see it that way yourself. But it's also an understanding as all people in the Lord that there's something common about God and us. As I've just said, we're all called to do a job. Verse 17 says, for this cause, I've sent unto you Timotheus, Timothy, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring unto you the remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach. So he sort of said, well, Timothy, he has a love of the truth like I do, like you do. And he's, when he comes, he's going to teach you what Christ taught me, Christ's ways, the things I teach him. Then he went on to say, as I teach everywhere in every church. And to me, this is a remarkable confirmation that the word of God is unchanging, it's safe to trust in, it's reliable, it's perfect, and it's consistent. I teach the same thing every church, everywhere, every time. In other words, the gospel, whether it be of salvation or overcoming or dealing with life or difficulties of life, God is 100% consistent 
And he just simply said, well, Timothy will prove it because that's what he'll stand on. And I, what a remarkable thing. And uh, you folk who are part of our wonderful worldwide fellowship at the moment, we are all part of this same concept of we teach everywhere we go, we teach people. If we've made an error somewhere, we learn, we change it. If we've got a better way of saying something, then we say it better. As, uh, as I'm sure as time passes, we all learn. And look, one of the realities of life is you can't teach what you don't know and you can't explain what you don't understand. So our walk in the Lord is about learning, it's about building up and it's about improving. And there's nothing wrong with having made errors in the past. If you learn something, then let's change, let's learn, let's move forward. We're, we're not all of a sudden turning the Bible upside down and telling people, just give your heart to the Lord, you don't need the Holy Spirit. None of our changes have lessened our standards or our stand for the things of the Lord, the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the supernatural powers. Not one of the changes we've looked at have altered the power and the promises of God. We just find better ways to manage each other. We find better ways to support each other. We find better ways to improve how we serve God, how we look after ourselves and how we look after each other. There is nothing wrong with that. And it's the same as all of you have been parents, your first child's an absolute, you know, it's, it can be wonderful to have your first child, but it's a terrible time for learning because you don't know when they're really sick. You don't know when they're bunging it on. You don't know this, you don't know that, but you learn on the job. And I believe all churches do the same thing. Timothy was learning on the job. Paul was learning on the job. I'm learning on the job. And the Bible tells us that's how we learn. That's how we move forward. So all these things, these stepping stones to growth uh, are all wonderful um, recognitions of how these things happen. Now, we'll move forward time-wise. Time, remember, we're talking about time. Um, when we move into um, Romans 16, by the time... Uh, Timothy's mentioned there as his work fellow. Uh, Timothy was moving on to 27 years old at this particular point. So um, it's sort of quite interesting that uh, this age is uh, getting older, he's getting maturer, but we still haven't got to the time frame where he says, let no man despise thy youth. That's still a little bit down the track yet. Uh, we move into the year 61. Timothy's round 31. Remember, we're working on averages, but we've used the consistent average from the start to the finish. I haven't gone early on one and late on the other. I've gone middle ground through all of these. And it's the best way, I guess, to get a fair outcome. So we move on to Colossians. And by the time Timothy's mentioning Col Colossians, he's called our brother. And he's, uh, he talks about he'll come and he'll do this. Uh, he's now 31 years old, 61 AD. So we can chronologically establish that by the time Colossians was written and Timothy's name was there, he was either at the earliest, 29, at the latest, maybe 33. But that's about the best you can do. You can't go either way. Like I said, pick the middle, got the, the average result. Now we move on to Philemon. Same year, and he's mentioned again, and of course... Philemon was a person, not a place, and it seems like Timothy had a friendship with Philemon. They was brothers together. Uh, in the Lord, who knows what other um, sort of friendship and, and joint work together they'd had. But here they were now at this particular point in time working for Paul, both of them. And um, Paul was getting to a serious point in his life where he was going to be uh, imprisoned then found guilty and of course he was uh, murdered or executed if you want to use another word and uh, that was sort of getting towards that time frame still a few years to go now philippians are written uh one year later approximately 62 ad by this time uh timothy still being mentioned um he is 32 years old on the same average scale I'd like to read a verse to you, and you'd probably like to read it too, out of Philippians 2, verse 19. And here he is now, uh, probably 20 years on, sorry, not 20, 12 years on from when he started. So we've, in the verses we've looked, we've probably used, moved 12 years in time. And here he is still serving Paul, doing this and that. And in uh, Philippians 2, 19, he says, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that also may be of good comfort when I know your state. So here is this consistency of purpose and direction. Timothy's out there settling, passing on the word of God, new church, old church, uh, 
out, you know, they had revivals, they had falling aways, they had the whole list, everything that we see today around us in our fellowship, they would have had the whole spectrum. They just never had the benefit of the technology we've got. They certainly uh, had a far harsher life when it comes to the sins and when it comes to food supply and clothing and cost of living. They were in a great difficult spot compared to us, but nonetheless, um, the purpose of being uh, an eyewitness for the Lord to go and do the Lord's work, that was unchanging. We're all in the same boat. Now, I'm going to move through to 1 Timothy now, and these are the verses where he's mentioned again, but um, the letter to Timothy, of course, is a letter to a pastor because Timothy was uh, pastoring a church. He'd been moved on to this role of actually settling down to a degree and being a caretaker, and he's written this letter, and I'd like to read to you, this is the, probably the key verse of the whole thing. We'll just go to 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. And he talks here about, let no man despise thy youth. So here it is, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So here is Paul now <laughs> writing a letter to Timothy, keeping in mind that Timothy did nearly all the writing of the letters when on behalf of Paul. I don't know if he wrote a letter to himself. I'm sure he didn't because uh, Paul would have just shared that with him verbally. But here he is now getting a letter from Paul, which I'm sure he absolutely adored the fact that Paul wrote to him specifically. And he says, let no man despise thy youth. Well, at this point, Timothy's probably 32, 33. So what does it mean, let no man despise thy youth? How can we work this out? How can we uh, correlate the chronology, which is really without debate? Maybe the years might be debatable one year or two before or after, but the reality is he is now 12 years or longer on from when he first started working with Paul. So he's obviously at that point. But when we consider in the age he was in, Jesus never started his ministry till he was 30 years, aid, uh, years of age, and it was still considered part of the, um, perhaps the, the way they did their business, part of their culture was that at 30 years old, you were still a young person, particularly going into ministry, you were youth by way of the, uh, the working of the ministry. You were a young, if you like, a young pastor at age 30 because the bulk of the people, and it was known around the place, the bulk of the people couldn't take scriptural responsibility till they were 30. And there was a lot of this still floating in the air of these things which have been part of their past, getting out of some of the um, Hebrew uh, traps that were there. And we're going to look at Hebrew in a moment, Hebrews. So the answer to what does it mean, let no man despise thy youth, the most likely and better answer is that at 30 years old or 31 or 32, by definition, a man of that age moving in, being a, a, a priest or a pastor in the church, he would be considered a youth in the sense of young for the responsibility. So I hope that answers that question. It's the best way to answer it. And it's also in keeping with the chronology in the scripture, but it's also as about as accurate as we might make it. Now, I'd just like to move over into Hebrews 13, 23. We're nearly done now. And uh, just a, a little verse here. Hebrews 13, 23, there's a bit of a debate. Now, Timothy's in his 30s now. This is in the 60s written. Hebrews 13, 23 says, Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he come to you shortly, I will see you. Now, the very interesting thing is, Timothy only wrote for Paul. And at the end of the letter to the Hebrews, here is Timothy signing off this letter to the Hebrew people. And in verse 25, just to move on a little bit, he said, Grace be with you all. Amen brackets, written to the Hebrews from Italy by Timothy. Who was at Italy at the time this was written? Well, that's where Paul was, because Paul had to stand uh, trial. He had to go before Nero the second time. And this sort of helps us understand as a so-called debate about who wrote Hebrews. Most likely the fact that Timothy was signed off on it and he's talking about his life with Paul and the other responsibilities with Paul 
the most logical conclusion, if you're happy to have one, would be that Hebrews was written by Paul. But the style of the writing, knowledgeable of the law, knowledgeable of this, experienced, all that, it, it very clearly is someone of Paul's calibre, but to have Timothy sign off on it just about seals it for myself. You might have another view and that's fine. Um, for myself, I see it that that's probably there. And I'd like to close on Timothy's life to Timothy 4.22. We'll finish off here, hand back to Pastor Jeff. But it, it's interesting that this transition of Timothy over these years, he's now 37, maybe 38 when this is written, to Timothy, second letter from Paul, 2 Timothy 4.22, says, the Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit, grace be with you, amen. So, and then it goes on, brackets, the second epistle unto Timotheus ordained the first bishop of the church of the Ephesians was written in Rome when Paul was brought before Nero. So we have all these linking things, but notice he's now ordained the first bishop, meaning the head pastor of the church of the Ephesians. So that's a, a wonderful insight into these things. And I hope that's been a little bit helpful at just explaining how youth, the scripture of the youth, how a young person can develop in the Lord and how we can all be just like Timothy, regardless of what our age. Anyway, thank you. I'll leave it there.